Hey guys, Chris from Propel here. Today we're going to be looking at the ExtraCycle E Stoker. And the E Stoker is another long tail cargo bike from ExtraCycle, really the inventors of the long tail cargo bike with the Bosch motor system. And it's a really pretty awesome bike. It's a bike that's designed to carry up to 400 pounds. So you can carry 200 pounds on the back of your bike. And that's really something that's kind of special about it. So if you want to carry tons of cargo or you want to put kids on the back, that's what this bike really worked well for. And beyond that, the, the great thing about it is you can also ride in all sorts of terrain. The E Stoker has a 24 inch wheel as opposed to a 20 inch wheel, which brings the derailleur up a little bit higher in the rear. So another detail that's particularly unique about the Extra Cycle is it's a steel frame. Now most bikes you'll generally find these days are aluminum frames, but Extra Cycle is one of the only e-bike manufacturers that we work with actually that uses a chromoly steel frame. Steel has a little bit more compliance in comparison to aluminum. So if you're riding on kind of rougher terrain and stuff like that, you might find that the steel frame kind of dampens out some of the rough spots a little bit more than you would otherwise find on an aluminum frame. So it's not as necessary to have some of the suspension or something like that you might find on some other bikes. Some of the other details kind of relating to the frame specifically, we look at here, we could look at the stem and the handlebars. Now this bike comes in three sizes, but the frame is actually the same size on all of those. Mainly what happens is you get a different stem and a different seat post. So the, this one happens to be the medium size, which has a 90 millimeter stem and a 400 millimeter seat post. The seat post is 31.6 millimeters, by the way. That's something helpful to know in case you wanted to maybe perhaps swap out the seat post for a suspension seat post or something like that. Quite common that people do. And it has an extra cycle saddle made by Velo and it's pretty comfortable saddle. But in looking up at the handlebars, we have this ergonomic handlebar, which is pretty swept back, gives you a relatively upright seating position. And then you have the Ergon GP1 grips, again, uh, offer a lot of support, make it really easy for when you put your hand on the grip, you have a lot of support that you're not kind of cutting off your circulation you might find with a normal, just cylindrical style grip. And Another detail you might find is this really long steerer tube on here. Again, this is a inch and an eighth straight steerer tube. It's not tapered as you might find on some other sort of bikes, but still works quite well, but it's particularly long. So it allows you to really get the handlebars way up there and make room for some extra accessories like this because you have this porter rack, which is an add on. It's an optional setup. So this has the porter rack and what's called the porter pack. And that's another one of those things that's kind of unique to the extra cycle. Part of what really makes the extra cycle really unique and special is this long tail and, and kind of honing in on this area of the, the rear end of the bike, which is really extended. It makes it kind of into like a bicycle pickup truck, if you will. And what you see on this bike are some added accessories. This top portion here is what's called a hoopty and it has this outer protection for if you have a if you have some kids in the back or if you wanted to carry certain things you can kind of lock it into place with these bars but really ultimately it's designed to to carry kids whether they're using this pad or which is called the magic carpet or they're using the yep child seat, which is the recommended child seat to use in configuration. And then from there, you have some of the standard accessories. The bike does come standard with the, with the rear rack, as well as the, the top plate here. And then we have here, this, this has installed the, the rear side bags, as well as what's called the U-tubes. The U-tubes are great when the kids get to be bigger and they're sitting on the pad and they want to put their feet down on something, that's a really great way to go. And I keep on saying kids, but the reality is an adult can certainly ride on this as well because the capacity of just the cargo area is 200 pounds. Another thing that's kind of special on the extra cycle platform, especially the newer versions, is this kickback kickstand. This one's called a kickback three. 
and it's super stable, pretty wide double leg kickstand. And the nice thing about that, if the kids are kind of loading or moving around on the bike, it's gonna stay really stable. And that's quite a nice thing. It's something you might not necessarily think about, but it's really important when you wanna carry kids or even just cargo on the back of the bike. When you wanna put the kickstand up, you just push the bike forward. And when you wanna put the kickstand back down, you just put your foot down put the kickstand down, and then just pull it back, just like that. Tire on the East Stoker is a 24 by 2.35. So it's a relatively wide tire, generally wider than most tires that you usually see on a bike. And it's a smaller diameter, so they did their best to keep the center of gravity relatively low. The tread on this tire is relatively aggressive. It's a great tire for the street, but it also has some capabilities to ride in kind of a more off-road setting. And I think a lot of people really appreciate the versatility of a tire like this, because a lot of times when people get a bike, they might think that they're gonna use it just for this very specific use scenario, but they end up riding it in many more situations and wanna go more places and just explore more ultimately. But as I said, it's a 24 by 2.35. Uh, we have some of the, the details about the specifications on the tire on the side here. So it's a 2 to 4.5 bar, which is more commonly used in Europe for the tire pressure settings. And it's a 30 to 65 PSI. So personally, for a tire like this, it goes from 30 to 65. I'd probably set it at like a 45 or 50 PSI, just to kind of have that happy medium. The higher the pressure, the more efficient you're gonna be, but the less comfortable. The lower pressure, the less efficient, but you'll be a little bit more comfortable and potentially have a little bit more traction. Another thing to note is you might be more susceptible for a puncture than if you're at a lower pressure because you end up having more surface on the ground with that tire. So it uses a standard Schrader valve. The rim is a 24 by 24 millimeter. And then it uses a Dior XT hub with a through axle. Now the through axle is a slight improvement from previous versions of the extra cycle. So they just made it to be a little bit more robust and durable. And coming around to the rear, you'll see that we have a same 24 inch wheel in the back, as opposed to what you might find on some of the standard edge runner styles with the 26 in the front and 20 inch in the rear. This does bring the center of gravity up a little bit, but ultimately you can be capable of riding on a lot rougher terrain and you ultimately have a larger tire. So as you see, there's a pretty decent amount of space between the derailleur here to the ground, which is uh, one of the added benefits of this platform. So this does have the Shimano Dior 10-speed derailleur, has 11 to 42 cassette, it does have the Shadow Plus stabilizing system. So right now it's, it's off, and then maybe you're riding in more of an off-road. If you just switch it up, now it's really stable, and that's gonna help to prevent your chain from jumping around. So paired to the Shimano Dior derailleur and cassette, we also have a Shimano Dior trigger shifter. And that's how we're gonna change the gears from one to 10 and we have two triggers here. There's this, which goes into the higher gear with your pointer finger, and then your thumb will bring you to the lower gear, and you can actually shift three gears at a time with the Dior system, so that's quite nice. And then individually with the going into the higher gear with your pointer finger, so. And this is a 22 chain ring made it to the Bosch Performance Speed motor here. So this particular bike is set up with the Bosch Performance Line Speed Motor. However, it's also available with the Bosch Performance Line CX Motor. Now the Performance Line Speed that has the benefit of going up to 28 miles an hour, but it has slightly less torque in comparison to the CX Motor. The Speed Motor has 63 newton meters of torque, where the CX, which is often used for mountain bikes, has 75 newton meters of torque. So if you're in a particularly hilly environment, you might find that you want to have the CX motor, but if you have more varied terrain and you really want to have the thrill of that additional speed, you might feel like this might be a good way to go. The one thing to consider is that technically speaking, there are some limitations on where you can ride a speed motor 
as opposed to a CX motor or the 20 mile an hour motor. And you might want to consider that when choosing between these two different systems. So we have a FSA 170 millimeter crank and these are our VP kind of urban pedals with the nice like grip tape on them. These are really nice because uh, they have good grip to them but they won't hurt your shins or something like that if you slip off them. So I think for most environments this works quite well but maybe if you're riding in more of a rugged off-road terrain you might feel like you might prefer some sort of uh, mountain bike platform pedal instead but but that's pretty easy to swap. Giving power to the motor we have the Bosch Performance Line batteries. Now this particular bike is set up with the Bosch dual battery system so it has two 500 watt hour power packs. The standard configuration and kind of the lower price point would come with one single 400 watt hour but you could really get it configured however you'd like and technically speaking you can actually change it later on if you felt like you'd like to. I mean a single battery generally speaking is going to get you between 20 to 60 miles so a dual battery is going to get about double that so 40 to 120 miles. However if you do have a speed motor or you're running a CX motor you're running a particularly large load or you're really going up a lot of steep hills. You might see a little bit less range, but I think that's generally a pretty good average. So for charging the batteries, you're gonna charge it on the bike or off the bike. If you wanna charge it on the bike, you actually could charge both the batteries at the same time. This is the port. It's the same port on the bottom side of the battery as well. So you're gonna use the same plug and that works really well. Uh, the, the bike comes standard with a four amp charger. So to charge a single battery, it's gonna be somewhere around four hours. So two batteries is gonna be about eight hours. Now this does have another port on it, but because it's a dual battery, you're only gonna charge just from that, that one port. The port on the other side is, is not in use and there's a label over that. So for the brake levers, we have the Shimano Dior two finger levers. That's the BLM6000 does have an adjustable reach so there's a little bolt here where you can adjust the reach so for people that might have a little bit shorter fingers they might want to pull it in a little bit further or somebody's a little bit larger they want to have it out further that's an option. For the brakes we have the Shimano Dior post mounted 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes and really good stopping power and that's paired with the also the Shimano center lock 180 millimeter rotors. The center lock rotors is a two-piece rotor which helps with the heat displacement and overall keeping the rotor to be a little bit more true. So from ExerCycle you have two different options for displays. You can get either the Purion which is on this bike or you can get the Kiox display. This is the Purion I'm going to show you how it works. So to turn the display on, or actually the bike overall, there's a power button. You're just gonna push it down here and it's gonna turn the display on. By default, the bike's gonna be off mode and you're gonna get the 0, .0, 0.0 miles per hour and then you'll show the battery life. If you wanted to activate the assistance, you just hit the plus button and you can get into the first level of assistance. Eco mode is gonna give you about a 50% boost. Tour is about 100, Sport, 200 and turbo mode is like about 275 and you can change it anytime. Off will be just riding like a normal bike and if you wanted to cycle through some of the other functions on the display you can hit the minus button and you could cycle around so you have the trip distance and you just hold the, the minus button down again so now you get the total mileage or odometer the range, the range is gonna be based on what assistance level you're in and the riding that you've done in the past. So if I move this up to eco mode, we'll get the range as 16 miles. If I go up to turbo mode, it, we're at seven miles. Keep in mind the battery is pretty close to depleted. I, we've been riding around a lot, just having a lot of fun with it, but you know that's what, that's what we got here. Some other functions that exist on here is you have the ability to activate the lights. If you hold the plus button down for a couple of seconds, you'll see this little light icon turn on and this will show you the, the light is on front and rear. Now this is running off the Bosch motor system. This is putting out six volts for the lights. You also have the option to run 12 volts, but this particular system doesn't require more than six volts. 
Some other details about the Purion display. We do have walk assist. The walk button is below here. If we tap the walk button and then hold the plus button, that's gonna actually activate the walk assist. So it's a two button function. So you tap the walk and then you just hold the plus button and that's actually gonna move the pedals and we're gonna activate the walk assist. Some other details, the Purion display has a micro USB. This is what you'll use to update the system and program the motor. It's not used as some of the displays, you can actually use it to charge your phone or some things like that. There's no actual voltage coming out of this. It's only for programming purposes. The Bosch system overall is really advanced. Part of what really makes it advanced is its sensors. So there's three sensors utilized by the Bosch system. One is your cadence sensor. It's sensing how fast you're pedaling. Two is your torque sensor. It's sensing how hard you're pedaling. And three is a speed sensor. It's sensing how fast the rear wheel is going. Based on all that information, the Bosch system is going to deliver power proportionate to your input. One of the things you might notice about the Bosch system is this really small chain ring. Seems kind of odd. Most people would think that you're going to have to pedal really fast in order for that to actually work, but this is a 22 chain ring, but it actually acts as a 52 chain ring. Reason being is for every crank revolution, the chain ring is rotating two and a half times. So inside of the motor system, there's actually a reduction gear and that creates this uh, special system that allows you to turn the cranks and ultimately allows the motor to spin at a much faster rate and a much more efficient rate. Really enjoyed hanging out with you guys today and reviewing the Extra Cycle E-Stoker. I hope you like the bike. I certainly do and uh, it's part of the reason why we carry in our shop. So feel free to stop by sometime if you want to check this bike out or some other electric bikes or cargo bikes. We have a store in Brooklyn, New York as well as Long Beach, California where we do have these bikes available for demo along with many others. So feel free to stop by or just give us a shout and we're happy to help however we can.